Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Burn here. Just wanted to do a quick little update video since I didn't get to do it over the weekend um, and there's just been a lot of basketball going on on my part. So I do apologize that there hasn't been a uh, video out, especially podcast style uh, for about a week now. But uh, we are here today to talk a little bit about the NBA playoffs. And before we do, please remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Again, all that stuff helps out uh, us, my boy Pete, Brad and I to build this channel to be something that, again, I want this to be a place where we can get together, talk about basketball, whether we agree, agree or disagree with whatever is happening in the game. Uh, I think it's just a fun time to talk about it. So without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. Um, 76ers sweep the the Nets. I think that this was kind of an obvious one for me. Uh, the Nets just lost everybody. You know, Ben Simmons isn't playing on this game in this team. Uh, I just think it's just a recipe for disaster. Even though uh, Mikel Bridges is playing phenomenal for the Nets right now, I really do think that this is just in a situation where uh, the Nets are just overmatched and overpowered by a 76ers team that has been clicking on the right cylinders. And uh, we got to start looking at Tyrese Maxey as a number one or number two option now. I mean, he's been playing very well. Um, I definitely could see him overtaking Harden's position, even taking Harden's spot because of the rumors of him going to... Uh, Houston and so I could definitely see that happening and so I'm excited the only thing that's a concern you know especially uh maybe not for Celtics fans like like me um but a concern for 76ers fans and really anybody in the playoffs is of course Joel Embiid hurt once again another year where he's hurt um and so it looks like he's going to be out for the most part going to be out of the opening game uh for the series um and so that's going to be unfortunate news for the uh 76ers who are again are trying to battle for that number one or to get to the nba eastern conference finals it's just going to be a tough battle for them if Embiid is not there and they can't get a rhythm with those guys um they're going to need tyrese maxey and james harden to carry the squad um celtics hawks celtics right now are up a 3-1 uh the celtics just won yesterday uh, you know, I, I never really thought the Celtics were going to be in trouble this, uh, this playoff series. Again, the Hawks do some tremendous work, but as of right now, John Collins and Trey Young are having probably their worst playoff performance I think we've ever seen. You know, this is a team that at one point was in the Eastern Conference Finals, took a game away from the 76ers, or sorry, I think the Bucks, I believe, or 76ers, I think the Bucks. Um, and so the fact that, you know, the 76ers, or sorry, that the Hawks right now are, uh, not really clicking on all cylinders. It's clear to see that this team is struggling tremendously. Um, I just think that's going to be hard for Quinn Snyder to get this team uh, motivated and engaged for the next round. Uh, or sorry, for I don't think that they're not going to make it to the next round. But you know, for the last game, you know, especially with Dejounte Murray now getting suspended for the altercation that he had with the ref. Again, it's kind of one of those things where you know I think Dejounte Murray needs to. Uh, mature a little bit more and I just think that that's just kind of just a heat of the moment type of thing like look if you were mad at a ref or anything like that just talk about them in the press conference just call call them out I know that you'll get fined for it but it's worth that than the suspension with no pay right because then uh, you're basically not going to be getting paid uh, which is again <laughs> not a good thing I'm sure I'm sure DeJounte Murray wants his money and uh, you know I'd rather I mean I guess you don't lose any money but it's also kind of one of those things too where you know, if you bad talk a ref, maybe you just get fined like $10,000 and call it good. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Again, Celtics going to win this series. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, Bucks Heat. You know, this one to me is a very sad one because there's just been a lot of injuries with this one. Uh, Tyler Hero with a broken hand. Victor Oladipo, unfortunately, with a torn patella tendon, which sucks because he was playing so well. Um, I thought that he was going to be a guy that kind of resurged and recovered from everything, but... It seems like year in and year out, he always gets hurt. Um, and it sucks because, again, he's a tremendous talent. Can definitely make a huge impact. He did um, in the previous game before. Um, so the class, so just to me, it is just a very sad situation for the Miami Heat. Uh, and for the Bucks. you know, they're going to need Giannis to come back. We do not. We did not realize how badly uh, this team needed Giannis to carry them. Um, and it's just kind of clear to show you with the way that the Heat uh, and the Bucks right now are just completely polar opposites of each other you know the the heat are hitting a lot of shots it's a i think it's a credit to really to spolstra and the way that he's been coaching uh his team because if you look at the talent that he has and the players that he's lost so like you would think that this guy would be a 13 seed uh you know looking to be a lottery protection type of team uh but that's just not the case and so that's cool to see that the he are hanging on but i think the bucks will end up winning this if Giannis is back and healthy which it looks like he is um on to the knicks and Cavs. 
This one is a fun one. I just think that to me, if you were to tell me that if any, if the Knicks were going to take a 3-1 lead over the Cavaliers, I would have called you crazy. I think my boy Pete, and Pete would be the only one to tell you that's not crazy. That's just Knicks basketball. Um, and it's and it's awesome to see that the Knicks right now are going to be moving on since 2013 if they can um, against this Cavaliers. I just don't see the Cavaliers necessarily coming back from this. Defensively, I think Tom Thibodeau is putting up a master class. Again, I'm worried a little bit about their bodies uh, defensively and offensively for the next series, especially with the Tom Thibodeau team, who tires out their, his guys tremendously. Um, so I'm curious to see how they battle it out. Um, one player that I've been kind of disappointed in this playoff series, actually, has been Darius Garland. I thought he was going to step up a little bit. Only having 21 assists throughout these four games is too little for me. I think he's got to average at least 35, something like that, get 10 more assists in his in his game. Uh, but the fact that he hasn't is a little disappointing, and I'm hoping uh, that something uh, could happen in the future uh, for them to go. But they, you know, with only three guys, I think shooting over 30% for the Cavaliers is also a tough one to deal with. So... Cavaliers could be in a little bit of trouble, um, and the Knicks look like they'll be able to move on uh, without any ease. Uh, Nugget Wolves, right now the Nuggets are up 3-1. to one. Uh, Wolves saved themselves last night. Anthony Edwards is definitely one of the one of the top players in the league, uh, under 25. I just think that he's kind of shown that throughout his career so far. I know that he's had a lot of inconsistencies. There's been a lot of stuff going on, especially with the injury that he had uh, against the Lakers, which, to me, I thought they should have won that game with the way that the Wolves just absolutely gave that game away. Um, and they also got to start thinking about the offseason too. Like, what what is the move for the Wolves? Are they going to keep Carl Anthony Towns? Are they going to trade him, sell him? Um, are, you know, thinking about guys like Rudy Gobert? Are they done with him? Are they going to keep him? Uh, there's a lot of things that need to be done um, if you are uh, the T-Wolves. But we know the Nuggets are going to pass. That They're a good team. The third option, Michael Porter Jr., is just a tremendous Guy, uh, player um, again can be a little inconsistent at times but still I like his game I think he's a very tremendous player so I gotta stick with him as kind of the guy uh, Grizzlies Lakers uh, I think this is just veteran versus youth and veteranship will always win over youth no matter what especially in any sport uh, maybe football is the only one where I think that that's not the case but in most sports that is the case um, and basketball is no different. Rui Hachimura and Austin Reeves are tremendously doing well for the Lakers. You know, Rui Hachimura put up a 29-point game, uh, I believe either game one or game two. And again, the Lakers are in a really good position right now, excuse me, to really destroy this game and really uh, destroy this uh, series. Uh, the Grizzlies, I think they just had too many injuries. And with the inconsistencies of uh John Morant and the fact that he can't really get to his spots that he normally gets to and then you got guys like Dylan Brooks who's your third option which again not hating on the guy but he is not a third option type of player I think that he has been full of himself uh just because he's been talking smacked about LeBron so I get that from that perspective he has to he's kind of that guy in terms of the trash talking and things like that uh, but at the end of the day uh it's very sad to see the Grizzlies kind of bow out the way that they have because, you know, I thought they were okay. Um, you know, I thought that this was definitely a winnable series for the Lakers. I thought this was the series that they wanted. Um, it's definitely a lot better than playing the one seed. Um, the Nuggets, that is. And so to me, excuse me, um, this is a, is a great matchup for the Lakers. And AD is playing out of his mind right now, playing like an MVP of the playoffs so far. Uh, second chance points going to the Lakers. Everything is going to the Lakers right now, uh, and that's just a tremendous fun series to uh, to watch. If I, if I'm uh, saying so myself, um, and let's move over to to the other games. Uh, Kings Warriors. You know, I think that this one is also a uh, sad state of affairs because De'Aaron Fox actually just got hurt. Um, we'll see what happens with this finger. The series is tied two two. It could be over for the Kings just because without De'Aaron Fox playing at his tremendous best self, I just think it's hard for them to win the game. Um, and we know what uh, what's going to be going on for them. Again, I, I they're a good team. They're a great team. But the Warriors have just been there before. And it's just so tough to, to navigate who's going to win that series. Again, if it was before the De'Aaron Fox injury, I still would have said the Kings because they just love playing at home. And I think the home court advantage is a huge X factor for the Kings. But... With the way that 
the Warriors continue to play the game that they do, and with the Kings losing De'Aaron, De'Aaron Fox's quick ability, quick shooting that he's known for, it's going to be a tough road for them to, to win the playoff series. So uh, we'll see what happens in that game. Uh, and then lastly, but not least, Suns-Clippers. This one's over. The Suns are winning. Uh, the Clippers, Kawhi Leonard has yet to play after, I believe, game two. And, you know, he's dealing with a lot of stuff from off the field or off the court stuff. Uh, that's definitely affecting him tremendously. And so I just think that that's also something where uh, the Clippers need to just accept reality. It's going to be another year where Steve Ballmer loses. Um, and the Suns, they're probably going to the playoffs. They're probably going to uh, – well, they are in the playoffs. They're, they're probably going to move on to the to the Western Conference Final. To me, the biggest question for them is do they have enough depth for – uh, dealing with the teams that they're going to be facing from here on out. Uh, you know, you have teams like the the Nuggets, potentially the you know the Lakers as well as another team that they could potentially face. There's a lot of stuff that's going on uh, for the Phoenix Suns to wonder if they're going to win uh, two playoff series, three playoff series. But this is a fun team to watch. I'm excited to see what they do in the future. Uh, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I know I kind of went through them by quick, uh, but this is just to kind of get a, a gauge and to let you know what I thought about the games. Uh, so let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, guys, like I said, my name is Bernie. Thank you once again for joining, and we'll catch everybody on the next episode of The Charge. Peace out, everybody.